So this would be somewhere where you can access any of your saved stitches. Um, there. So if you create lettering, words, or anything like that, this is where you can access it, where you've saved it on the sewing machine itself. Here it's going to give you a rundown of how much storage you have, 4 megabytes, which is, is pretty significant if you're just saving words and phrases and things like that. Here you'll also notice you have a flash drive icon. So if you were doing machine embroidery and you needed to upload a design that you purchased online, you can do that by um, inserting a flash drive to the USB port, which is great. If you ever needed to update the machine, you can do that via a flash drive as well. Okay, the next button is our settings icon. That is something I'm gonna go over more in depth later uh, at the end of the video, just because that's kind of its own little separate thing. So that's something we'll go over later. Here we have a question mark button. So this is sort of like we have a quick question about the machine say you know you forgot how to thread it um, basically it's kind of a quick reference guide that's built in which i really like and so this is great um, for some of those like replacing the needle what do i need to do to replace my needle so it's going to have some illustrations here available to us which makes it really quick and easy instead of having to pull out the instruction manual every time we have a question winding the bobbin, so sort of those basic, simple things. But those are the things that you can forget pretty easily, especially if you have maybe more than one sewing machine, maybe you have a couple different brands, or, or you know, uh, yeah, brands of machines at home. This is a great way to like quickly access that information. The last icon here is a little key. That's basically a lock setting. So what it's gonna do when you hit that is it's gonna lock the machine. So no matter what I hit, I'm even, you know, I'm pressing the start stop button on the left hand side. It's not going to allow me to sew uh, at all. And that's a, that's a really great safety feature uh, for when you're changing the needle, when you're changing the presser foot, and that way you don't accidentally sew through your finger at all, or you don't accidentally, you know, mess up your project in any way. You know, this is really great too. If maybe you have kids in the house and you know you're working on a project that you need to go back and forth to you know go ahead and lock the lock the screen and hopefully they don't figure out that that's the button to unlock it but mostly it's for a safety feature for when you're changing your presser foot and your needle all right so this is the main screen this is the thing this is the screen this is how it's going to pop up when you first turn on your sewing machine if you've just purchased the machine you may get a prompt initially to choose your language but other than that this is your main sewing screen and so i'm just going to go over everything from top to bottom here we have my favorite icon this is a really great feature of the sewing machine it's called the pivoting feature and what it is, is, you can kind of just look at the icons. That's why I really like Janome. The icons are pretty intuitive. You can see there's a needle down in a piece of fabric, and then there's the presser foot, and the presser foot is away from the fabric itself. So this is a pivoting feature. So what that means is while you're sewing along and you stop, the needle will stop needle down, the presser foot will automatically raise itself, and then from there you can pivot your, your fabric. This is really great for machine applique, working with curves. If you're doing straight line quilting and you're gonna be doing lots of geometric designs, so you need to move the fabric in a square or you know rectangle, things like that. It's just a really nice feature, feature to have on um, when you're working with all different all types of different projects, especially if you don't want to lose your space. And you know it's on because it's yellow. So the automatic setting is it's as soon as you turn the machine on, it's always off. And then whenever you want to turn it on, you can just turn it on that way, which is really nice. That's something I turn on quite frequently. You'll notice the little icon next to it is that so see how you have two two needles and then one needle this is a twin needle option or a, really it's a twin needle setting and so what you're doing is you're telling the sewing machine that you have a twin needle in place this allows you to run two threads at once it's really great for working with stretch fabrics decorative stitching you can even do straight line quilting 
great for like making Christmas stockings. I like using a twin needle. And so whenever you put a twin needle in, you want to tell the sewing machine that because what it's going to do is it's going to block you or gray out anything that you're not able to do with that twin needle. Uh, you'll notice here that the two lines of stitching pop up and then like this alphabet folder I can no longer access. I can't click on this stitch or that stitch. I can't even turn on the pivoting feature. And that's because if you have a twin needle sticking in your fabric, you don't want to turn it because otherwise you're going to twist those needles and then you might end up breaking one or worse, you might end up damaging your bobbin case or something like that. So if you're ever going to be doing a twin needle, just remember to turn that icon on. Again, the twin needle turned yellow. And then as soon as we turn it off, it's telling you, you know, make sure you have your regular needle in place. Make sure you have your single needle. We don't want you to break anything. So listen to the machine when it talks to you. Okay, the next icon is to turn on what's called the AccuFeed foot or Janome's version of a walking foot. And so technically on this machine, you're supposed to engage it. And again, it's gonna gray you out. It's gonna block you from doing certain stitches that it doesn't recommend that you use. They're gonna say you can't use the AccuFeed foot with some of these stitches. I would argue from a personal standpoint that you could use the zigzag stitch with your AccuFeed foot. I've done it before. You definitely wanna slow down. You don't wanna to go too fast when you have your AccuFeed foot on. Um, what this does is really kind of changes the foot there, changes the sole. It will gray you out from doing things it doesn't recommend that you do. And on some of the models of Janome's, I noticed that the AccuFeed foot won't actually, the foot won't actually engage unless this is turned on. So that foot hooks into the back of the machine and without this icon engaged, it may not work properly for you. So just be aware that um, on some of the Janome's, you have to choose that when you use your AccuFeed foot. I don't ever really turn it on and I use my AccuFeed foot all the time. So, uh, you know, refer to your instruction manual. Uh, sometimes I like to live a little dangerously. Okay. So the next icons down here, they're gonna look really familiar. They're basically the same ones that we were able to pick when we chose our home icon. Again, here's my basic utilities pages. This is gonna allow me access to all the different folders available to me. Here is my alphabet, so I can choose which style font I wanna do. And then again, there's that little garment guide. I don't ever use it, I just don't. And then here you're gonna notice all your different stitches. You'll see here there's 12 stitches, um, but if you were to refer back to the bottom of the, the cover plate on the top of the sewing machine, you'll notice that there's 23 stitches listed there. Um, so the way that we're gonna access basically our second page is with these arrows. So these arrows arrow over. And if you're ever unsure where you are, look up top here. It's gonna say utility, one of two. So that means one of two pages. And then I go on a, use my arrow here and then boom, I jump to number 13 and then there's 13 through 23. So what's nice about a color touch screen is you just press it, bing, bing, boom, you touch which one you want. And I love that this machine actually shows me what the stitch looks like on my little preview over here as well. It's really great to have. Um, since we've been kind of talking about this area, this is just sort of a preview area. It's letting you know what stitch you're working on. It'll physically show you any changes that you do to the stitch as well. Um, you'll also notice right here, it's gonna give you a presser foot recommendation. So on our basic straight stitch, it's gonna show you A foot. If we were to engage our AccuFeed foot, it's gonna tell you to do the AD foot uh, for, let's see maybe some of these specialty stitches. It's gonna show you an M foot, that's your overcast foot, things of that nature. Uh, so if you're doing a new technique, like a blind hem or something like that, make sure you kind of check out the screen. It'll give you the presser foot recommendation right there, which is nice. Okay, on the bottom of the screen, there's gonna be something really important. Um, so we'll start off with this. So when we're on a zigzag stitch, you're gonna notice here that this little line starts off really wide and then it kind of tapers down to be really narrow. That is a width adjustment. So how wide or how narrow our stitch is is gonna be determined by this setting right there. So just do minus and that's gonna make it more narrow. And if you watch the stitch here on the screen, you'll notice that it becomes less zigzaggy. 
And then as we increase the width, obviously the needle is going to move from the left to the right far more greatly. And so that's going to create a more, uh, a much more wide, a wider a zigzag stitch. On this particular machine, seven millimeters is going to be the maximum that we can do. Right below that, you'll notice that you have lines that are really far spaced, you know, greatly spaced apart, and then they're really close together. This is going to be the stitch length. And then again, if we just watch this stitch preview here, we'll easily be able to see those changes happening in real time. So that's for any stitch that has a width to it. So zigzag stitches, decorative stitches, some of your lettering, things of that nature. Now what happens when we go ahead and choose our straight stitch? You'll notice here that the little icon changes a little bit. It's not that tapered line anymore, but it looks like a needle hula hooping. Like that's kind of what I see. I see a needle doing the hula hoop. And basically what happens is when we select a straight stitch is that we now have a needle position. So what's gonna happen is you'll notice on the screen that the stitch physically moves. So it's moving to the left. You'll also notice if you were looking at your needle right now, you'll notice that the needle's changing position. So on a straight stitch, our width becomes a needle position and on a zigzag or any other stitch, it is a width adjustment. Again, the icons are pretty intuitive. You just look at it and kind of, you know, press the button, see what happens. Um, you'll figure it out pretty quickly. So here, if we open up the screen, all I did was hit that little arrow, boom, and a little fly up comes up. And here we have a couple of quick settings that we can change really quick. So you have an auto thread adjustment and then you have an automatic presser foot pressure. These settings are automatically set by the machine and they are the same settings for all the stitches at this point in time. Now, later on when we go into the settings page, you'll, I'll show you where you could change this settings, this, these two settings for the for all for the overall machine so no matter what stitch you do you can change the automatic thread tension and the presser foot pressure by going into your settings page but say you just want to temporarily change these maybe you just need to adjust them for this particular stitch you'd want to open up this little bottom window here and this is where you'd be able to do that uh, this really you're probably not going to mess around with these too much unless you're doing something specific say you're doing straight line quilting with a thick thread and so you have a thick thread in the top a thin thread in the bobbin and you need to play around with your thread tension this is where you would do that here if you're doing bobbin work you may have to play around with your thread tension if you're working with a really silky slippery fabric and the machine has a hard time pulling it through you may need to adjust how tightly the presser foot is sitting on the fabric so that way the feed dogs underneath can grab the fabric much more um, effectively. Same is true if you're working with a thicker fabric. Say you're working with a really thick lofty quilt and it just the presser foot can't lift up enough to kind of pick up and then come and grab the fabric. Um, then you may need to decrease the presser foot pressure. And I say the presser foot picks up, that's because I use the AccuFeed foot all the time. You may have to adjust this a little bit more if you're using like the regular presser foot, the A foot or something like that. If you're doing like a uh, hemming on jeans or something and it's really thick, you may have to loosen that presser foot pressure a little bit just so you can get over those thick seams and things like that. So on this fly up window, those will only adjust the thread tension and the presser foot pressure for that particular stitch that you're working on. Okay, and I'm gonna close that there. And that's basically everything on the main screen here. Um, you'll also notice a little icon up here. It's a Wi-Fi symbol. This machine does have Wi-Fi capabilities. Now, when I first got the machine, I was under the impression that only an Apple product um, could download the particular apps that Janome has available. So I think it's called like AccuStitch. Um, and there's like three different ones. I mean, there's a bunch of different ones that they have from Janome. And so for the longest time I had Android, I just switched over to an iPhone. So I will be playing around with that a little bit more 
to see if I can kind of figure that part of it out too because it really it's really beneficial for when you're doing machine embroidery okay so we talked about all these icons here um here you know here's all of our different extra stitches and things like that um here you'll notice here's a created stitches icon um so anytime that you've i think if you want to create custom stitches and things like that you can save it to there again i've never really used that before i think this looks shows a computer so i'm going to guess that that's for um stitches that you've created on one of the apps or on your computer and you've sent it directly to the machine. So there's that available to you. Again, I haven't gotten a chance to play around with that yet, but now that I have an iPhone, I'm gonna go ahead and give that a, a shot. Uh, so one of the things I do wanna show you for when you're kind of working with decorative stitches, actually I'm gonna show you with lettering first. Yeah, let's go to lettering first. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and pick a font. We're gonna just work with the block font here. And what you're gonna notice is that we have a couple of extra icons here. So we still have our pivoting feature available to us. But then the next one here, you're gonna see it says S and then it says L. That's basically small and large. So if you notice here, I'm gonna hit A under large and then I'm gonna hit this S and I'm gonna hit A again. And so you can see it's, um, it's just changing the size. So it gives you two different size options on most sewing machines when it comes to what they call the monogramming or the lettering on the sewing side you're pretty limited on how much you can edit the size of those letters just because it's it, when you play around with the sizing of the letters it, you get a lot of inconsistency with the stitching so a lot of manufacturers have just made it so that you can't even choose or you're very limited. And then that, that way it's just, it gives you really great consistent looking letters. So that's small and large, but then you'll notice there's a capital A and then lowercase a. So if you wanna do capital letters as opposed to lowercase letters, that's where you're able to access those. And then again, I can choose large or small. Oh, What happens when you do it with your um with your right hand a a a a so you'll notice the different sizing options there uh, for the letters which is really nice here there's a little trash can button so say you press the wrong letter you can go ahead and go back and trash that if you're spelling out like a whole sentence or something or maybe you're doing a date on a quilt label or something like that and you just need to delete one letter, you can actually use the little arrow here and toggle to that particular letter and delete that as you need it. You can also save something. So if there's something you know you're gonna write all the time, you know, maybe you wanna put made with love or you wanna put your name on everything that you create, you can go ahead and put it into a folder. And so what it's gonna do is, um, I always put it in these ORD, F folder, I believe you have to for it to save probably. I could be wrong on that. And so here it's gonna show you everything else that you've saved. And then you can actually name it, whatever it is that you're creating. So say it's your name or something like that, you can hit okay. And then you can hit okay again. And then that way it'll save whatever letter, maybe a date, a, a phrase, a catchphrase, a motto, maybe a business name or something like that. Here you're gonna notice that we're not able to adjust the length or the width, and that's because they wanna make sure that you're keeping a really good consistency with the stitching on the lettering. But you can you know, adjust the automatic thread tension if you need to. That might be something you might have to play around with a little bit more on the lettering, especially if you're using like a thicker thread or something like that, just because the, the needle's moving around much more and things of that nature. Um, you can adjust how far apart the letters are to one another. So if you want to play around with that, you can. Uh, I don't really get into that part of it. If I'm going to play around with my letters more, I do machine embroidery. You have a lot more editing capabilities on that side of things. 
Okay, so I showed you lettering. Oh, uh, one of the other things you want to know about on the lettering is, because this took me forever to figure out what the heck it was. So say you're doing multiple words, you know, you want to do uh, your name and then, you know, you're trying to do a, an actual sentence and you need to have a space. This right here are your three different spacing options. So you have small, medium, and large. It's not very intuitive because they're like boxes. And so for the longest time, I was like, why would I want to sew a rectangle in between my words? No, it's just spacing. So what it'll do is it'll kind of like skip a step and move over a little bit for you. So when you're ready to spell out something else, um, you hit one of these, you can just do that one. I usually, between words, I'd probably do this one. If you're doing, you're doing another sentence or something like that, you may want to do the bigger square as well. Okay, so now we're going to go back to this decorative stitch folder, this pictograph one. And, oh, I thought it would clear out the screen. Okay, so let's go back. See? So what I can do, as you notice here, it doesn't just do A, 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 or B, 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 B. It just kind of picks and basically what we've picked and chosen is what shows up here on the screen. So what we're doing right now is we're kind of like in the combination mode. We're creating our own stitch on the machine itself. So if you're doing lettering and you want to add something cute, you can actually come in here to pictograph and you can add a decorative stitch. So you could put a bow on there, which is really cute. Um, you can also do multiple decorative stitches and then you can come back in here, you know, D, F, and then, so then again, if we hit preview, then we can see everything that we've laid out. So this is a really great way to kind of create custom labels if you're doing quilting or a garment sewing. It's a great way to add a custom, you know, top stitch or something. It's just really not fun and kind of opens up the creative possibilities to be able to kind of combine stitches and create your own thing. So I wanted to go ahead and bring you back to the pictograph screen so that I can show you on lettering, when you first choose lettering, it's on automatically kind of do that creation. If you came into pictograph first, what you'd want to do is click this icon. So you'll notice here it has heart, 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 heart. So it's just going to do the same stitch over and over again. But if I wanted to create my own stitch, say I want, then I want to click heart, spade, diamond, heart, spade, diamond. So that's a creative stitch. So you'll notice maybe you just want to sew one of those, or maybe you want to add that heart with one of these stars and maybe you want to add a nice little space in between them and then you want a choo-choo train, you know, whatever it is. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I actually really like it for like train and then little trains. I think that's, I think that's really cute the way that comes out. So you can kind of combine the, the main, it's not the caboose. What's the first, I don't know what the first car, I guess the first car with the rest of the train. Um, you could do, you know, rocket ship, spaceship, you know, that's kind of cute. And then you could throw in some stars in there. So this is really cute. I like doing this kind of stuff for quilt binding, but again, the possibilities are endless here for you. Okay, so back on, so let's see. Let me go back to this really quick. So um, right here, this icon comes up basically when you're able to use it. It kind of looks like a sideways hamburger is the way I think of it. And basically it's a mirror image icon. So you notice that the train, the wheels are on the left-hand side and the top are on the right-hand side. So if I click this, it'll flip it. It'll flip it that way, so vertically. And you know it's on again because it's highlighted yellow. So I flipped it that way. That's standard and that's it flipped. Now if I click the regular hamburger, that's going to be a horizontal flip. So it'll actually flip the whole entire other way. Let me do one that's a little bit easier to read. Let's do the elephant. That'll be easy. So you can see the elephants are going the other way, this way, that way. This is a really great option if you're working with a bigger project 
and you know having to take it remove it from the needle or trying to shove fabric into the arm of the machine seems a little bit cumbersome um, this is a really quick easy way to kind of change the direction of the stitch without having to move your fabric around or you know say you want it to face a different way you know whatever your reasoning might be you do have the option to change it you can also turn on both at the same time so now you've completely done a 180 so here's it both turned on there's it regular and then there's it turned both of those settings turned on so it's just a really great quick easy way to kind of change um, the settings of the stitch to make things a little bit easier for you you could also actually let's go back to that so say you're creating a stitch so you can do regular elephant then you could do regular elephant again and you could completely let's see what let me do it and then you can completely flip it so it would sew off a little weird because you have these lines and things like that um and unfortunately you can't make it so that they're like like that on this machine there are certain other brands that allow you to do that uh, but not on this one but i mean you could still you can still have fun with it and figure out a way to make it work. I mean, if you do a lock stitch before and after each one, it's a little time consuming, but you can make it work a little bit better too. Okay, so we did our lettering, right? We did all the lettering stuff. We did our pictographs. Uh, we kind of went over all the basic settings here on the main page. And so what I wanted to go over next was the settings themselves. So when you click on the little wrench, this is gonna give us all of our basic sewing machine settings. So common settings here are gonna be, you know, some kind of technical stuff like screen contrast. So at the beginning of this video, I told you that I'd already filmed this earlier and I was having issues with the screen kind of like twittering and it's because I hadn't come in here and adjusted the screen contrast. So I'm gonna adjust this and just so you know, the screen is gonna kind of like flicker. So if I lower the screen contrast, you notice that it gets dimmer. And then this is what the screen was looking out, looking like when I first filmed this video. And then as I was filming it and showing the setting, I was like, oh, that like pretty much fixes the issue. So that's something to be aware of if, you know, your photo you know, sensitive or the lighting in your room is weird and you need to dim it or something like that. You have that available in your common settings. Here we have a volume button and this is how loud, how loud the buttons are. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it with my microphone on. Let's see. And then you could turn it off completely. You could mute it. I don't like to have it mute because I'm like, did I change it? You know, like sometimes you're going really fast back and forth between things. And you're like, I don't know if I clicked it or not. So I like to have it on at a one just so I can kind of hear it, but it's not so obnoxiously loud. And then underneath that, this is a really important one if you're American, because when you first get the machine, it'll be automatically set to millimeters. And if you're really American like me, you have no idea what millimeters are and you only work in inches. Or I know some British people sometimes work in inches too, but the automatic setting when you first get, the, like if you first purchase the machine is always gonna be set to millimeters. And so if you've been like, I don't know, why is it 50? Why is it saying 50 millimeters? I don't know what that means or you know whatever the measurement may be. Uh, you can go in here and actually on the first page, you can set it to inches, which I do appreciate. Now you're going to notice here on top of the screen, it says one of five. So this is the first page out of five. And that's just for this tab. So if on the common settings, there's five pages. So as we scroll through, you'll notice all the different settings. And we'll talk about, you know, later on, if we want to access the different uh, tabs, then they're all going to have their own set of pages here okay so we're still on common settings but we're just going to page two uh, we have touch screen calibration so if you're having issues maybe like your the screen doesn't seem to be picking up your finger very well or especially the stylus pen 
Maybe you feel like you have to really like jam on the screen a little bit to kind of access something. You may need to adjust your, you know, calibrate your touch screen. Next is the format. Really the most, usually when you're gonna be used doing the format is for a flash drive. If you ever wanna upload something to the machine, in particular mostly, you're gonna be doing machine embroidery uh, patterns or designs and things like that via flash drive. You have to actually plug in the flash drive. You have to come to this page and you have to click format and you have to format the flash drive. And then after it formats it, you can take it out and bring it over to your computer and then upload any files that you need to and then plug it right back into the sewing machine. That's how Genomi works. Uh, most other brands, you can kind of just shove a flash drive in it and it's no problem. But for on this machine, especially when you're doing machine embroidery, uh, you would have to format that first. Uh, page three, this actually allows you to turn off the, the machine has three major sewing lights to it. And this allows you to turn it off like either in the bed of the machine you know, maybe, maybe the light is too bright and it's distracting you from like watching the needle or something. So you can actually turn it off. You can actually turn off all three, which I'm not sure in what instance you would need to turn off all the lights. Uh, if anything, I want to add more lights on, but that's just me. I like, I'll have a lot of lights. Uh, here we have upper thread sensor. So this is to tell you if your thread has, is broken or not. Now it can only really tell, there's certain spots where it's not gonna be able to read it very well, which makes sense. But for the most part, um, you know, if the thread breaks in the upper take up area somewhere uh, or something like that, um, having this on is really nice because as you're sewing along and you're like, what's going on? My stitching's not looking right or something like that. The machine will stop, an error message will pop up letting you know that you need to rethread your machine. I think the manufacturer setting has this as off. So again, this might be a setting you might want to turn on right away if it's not already on. Next on page four, we have a standby timer. So basically if I leave the machine because I get easily distracted, you know, doing dishes and wandering off and doing other things while sewing on something or, you know, machine embroidery, you know, I just kind of let it do its thing sometimes. After about 20 minutes, what'll happen is the machine, it's, the computer will stay on, uh, but the lights, the sewing machine lights will turn off and the screen will, will kind of dim. It's just a power saving thing and it's to kind of save your lights, which I mean, they're LED, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, but this is really great if you're like me and you kind of wander off sometimes mid project or you're doing 20 things at once throughout the house. Um, so you can set that to whatever you want it to be. And then this is just for if you haven't touched the machine or haven't sewn on it for 20 minutes. If you're constantly touching the screen like I'm doing right now, or you know, in the middle of a sewing project, it's not just gonna turn off on you, which is nice. Here you can actually engage a screen saver and the machine itself has built in pictures, you know, some generic Genomi stuff. Um, but you can also, with the Wi-Fi capabilities on here, you can actually send your own photographs via those, uh, like the AccuStitch app from Genomi. So that is something I really wanna play around with. Um, I've known about it since I've had the machine, but again, I haven't had an Apple product, so I'm excited to uh, play around with that. Here, we can actually change the background color of the screen. Um, it's kind of hard to tell on the phone, but like this makes this box like a really light gray. <clears throat> this makes it like a very light taupe with sort of like a light white, you know, off-white eggshell -y background. And then this is a yellow, which let me show you what that looks like. Oh, I should probably hit save. So you hit okay, and then that makes it yellow. I don't like the yellow, that's just me. It's my personal preference. And so they do give you kind of an option to change that. If it makes it easier for you to see it with the yellow, feel free to change it up. Next here we have reset all to default. So any changes that you've made, like, you know, uh, I don't know, the upper thread sensor or, you know, inches to millimeters, 
you know, maybe you're like, I don't know what's going on with my machine. Maybe there's some weird funky stuff happening with the screen. Or maybe you just feel like, you know what, I want to start fresh. I feel like starting new or you've watched this video and you go, oh, I want to make sure I have all these settings in place. You could reset all to default and kind of start over again. Okay, so that's 505 of the common settings. So then we're gonna come next and then we're gonna see we're in ordinary sewing. So here, this was something we were talking about earlier. Um, we were able to adjust the automatic thread tension on individual stitches in the main page. Here under the settings, I can actually change the tension on every stitch. So whatever stitch I do, I have it set at auto right now, but say I want it to always be one less or a little bit looser on my upper thread tension for whatever reason, um, this may, this wouldn't be the place I would do that personally, but you do have that option here. I say, don't mess with this. If you don't need to, if you're finding yourself having, really, I would say this is a red flag that your machine needs to be serviced. If you're having to constantly come into this settings page and adjust your auto tension, there's something going on with your machine. Um, here, this is the remaining bobbin thread. Now, normally this is the setting. I don't know what the two stands for. I don't know if it's two feet, two millimeters, two yards, whatever. Um, but even at the lowest setting of 0.5, there is a significant amount of thread left on that bobbin. Let me tell you, if you're like me and you sew to the very last, like fiber, <laughs> um, the 0.5 is what you're going to want. Um, obviously, if you go less than that, it's going to be off um, entirely. But it, the thing is, when you have it, when you have this turned on, what it does is as you're about to sew something and it, it detects that you're low on thread, it's going to have a message beep at you like your bobbin thread may not be sufficient. And then what you're going to do is going to peek under your fabric because you have the drop and bobbin and you're going to go, I have at least six inches of thread left. What are you talking about? So it's really just kind of an indicator to you to kind of like keep an eye out on your bobbin and just know that you may sew a couple of inches without thread because there's like a kind of gray area where it can, it can read when you're bob out of bobbin thread and then when it can't read it at all. So. Um, but that is a nice feature of the machine overall. I am more happy to have it than not happy, let me tell you. Oops. Um, down here we have needle position. So I just have it set so my needle always stops needle down. Um, you could set it to always stop needle up. Uh, it just depends on how you sew. Here we have adjustable startup speed. So if you like to use the start stop button, what's nice is that you can set it so the initial speed of the needle is at a medium and then it'll catch up to whatever you have your speed slider set at. So if you have your speed slider set to super duper fast, what will happen when you hit the start stop button is it'll kind of go tick, tick, tick. It'll take a couple starting stitches and then it'll speed up to the, you know, the highest setting or you know, vice versa, it'll just kind of go medium and then kind of slow itself down. Um, this is for the foot control, so same thing. You can kind of set it so those first couple of stitches kind of ease you in to whatever the speed setting um, you have set at. Uh, the next is for uh, the cloth guide. Um, the cloth guide is like an external piece that you can set into the bed of the machine. I didn't get one with mine. My, I bought mine used and so I never even got one. I haven't missed it. So just know that if you have the cloth guide, um, this is where you would calibrate that. Oh, on page three, we have the foot height for our pivoting. So on that main screen where we were able to turn on our pivoting feature, here we're actually able to set how high the presser foot raises itself. So I have it at a very, fairly minimal two millimeters. Um, if you're working on something really thick or making a big old chunky bag or something like that, and you really want it up there, um, you can adjust it to uh, stop much higher for you. So just depending on what you're working on. I like the two, that's a good height for me for most of my quilting and stuff like that. Here again, this is the presser foot pressure for the entire machine for all the sewing that we're doing. 
Um, this is one of those ones that we could do in that particular on that particular stitch temporarily. Here is where we can uh, adjust it uh, pretty much permanently or until we adjust it again. This may be something you have to play around with depending on what types of sewing you're doing. If you find that you're working on a lot of really thick projects, you may have to come in here and you know adjust it and loosen it a little bit um, for the sake of the machine being able to pull the fabric through a little bit more consistently. Um, the variable zigzag sensitivity. Uh, this is one of those ones I've never touched and I've never needed to touch, obviously, because I don't really know what it's for. But if I ever had a question on it, I would refer to my instruction manual. Uh, the next one is thread cut after auto lock. This is one I know for sure. Uh, when you buy it new, it's set from the manufacturer on off. Um, I turn it on so, you know, if you watch the video where I review the parts of the machine, this is one where when you hit the lock stitch button, that little target button, uh, the machine will, you know, do your lock stitch. So it'll go up and down four times in a row. And then with this engaged, it'll do, it'll cut the thread automatically and then raise the presser foot for you too. Um, I like that because I never really use reverse, but I do use the lock stitch frequently and I like being able to have it do the cut and the presser foot raise all in one fell, you know, one fell swoop. Stitch adjustment. I'm not sure what that is. I've never used it. Obviously it's off. Uh, but the next one I do you I do like to have, and this is one that I tell people to turn on all the time. It's automatically set off. Um, but what's really nice about it, so when we have it on, what it is, is it's like a recall button. So say you're in the middle of a project. Like for me, this is, I'm going to show you real, like real life, how I use it. So if I'm on a quarter inch quilting stitch and I have my quarter inch AccuFeed foot on and I have it at a 1.9 for whatever reason, and you know, I've been working on my quilt top with this stitch at this setting and I've sewn it out. You know, I've been working on it, I've been sewing with this stitch set up this way. And for whatever reason, you know, I need to go to bed and I'm not going to get back to the project in a couple of days. So what I can do is I can have my, my, my stitch, you know, still up on the screen and I can just turn off the machine. And what's really nice is with that resume mode on, whenever I turn the machine back on again, it's going to ask if I want to resume where I left off on. And for me, again, I wander off on things. I can just hit, it says resume last pattern. I can hit OK. It'll actually bring it up exactly as I left off. So it even saved that stitch length adjustment. It saved the fact that I was using my quarter inch AccuFeed foot. The only thing it won't save, which you know, it's a safety feature, but it won't save the pivoting. So you would have to turn that back on again if that's something you like to work with. But that is probably one of my favorite little features, little extra features. Uh, the next tab is machine embroidery. Again, that's going to be a separate video in and of itself. Here is the Wi-Fi settings. So if you wanted to link to the Wi-Fi network, this is where you'd be able to do that. Um, I haven't had a chance to do that just because I haven't really got into that part of it, but that might be something I look into later. Hmm. I'll have to do that because I want to download those uh, AccuStitch apps. And then the last little icon here is the little flag and you could change your language. So, you know, if you wanted to practice your Espanol, uh, word auto, because you don't know all. That's pretty funny. So if you wanted to practice another language, you can do that there. And that is pretty much it. So those are all of our basic settings on the Janome Skyline S9. Machine embroidery will be a separate video, but if you have any questions about any of the icons or the settings that we did today, please feel free to leave a comment. And if you want to see more um, videos about the not only the Skyline S9, but other sewing machines, please subscribe to my channel because I am going to be doing a lot more, you know, how to use sewing machine videos. I'm also going to be doing some really great beginner 
sewing projects and beginner quilting projects and then we're going to be getting into machine embroidery as well so thanks again for tuning in and i hope you have a crafty day